Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Bill Ennis. I'm uh, an associate director with BC Hockey, and uh, one of my uh, jobs is to act as a, uh, a leader on the Enhanced Services webinar series. Um, the Enhanced Services webinars were created about a year and a half ago in order to offer professional development experiences to our members. And that was an initiative that actually came from the members saying or answering the question, how can BC Hockey help us be better at what we choose to do? So this was one way that we could help people be better, be more in the know, and uh, deal with a large audience across the province. Um, this particular webinar is on cross-ice hockey. And uh, before we get started, uh, just a couple of little housekeeping things. The webinar is expected to be 30 to 45 minutes. Now that's not a lot of time when you talk about being passionate about a, a subject and, and people tend to want to talk about it. Um, but uh, we find that people just sort of drift off and drift away after about 30 to 45 minutes. So my suggestion is that we keep very close to that timeline. And if we have to have a, a follow-up webinar or a series of webinars on this topic, then so be it, and we will, uh, we will get to that. Um, all delegates are on mute. If you do want to ask a question, please use your chat box. We won't be able to answer all the questions this evening. But uh, we may uh, choose one or two that uh, um, are particularly important to the topic. And we promise that we will do our best to uh, consolidate all the questions that will be asked and uh, follow up with you on uh, those questions and uh, answers that we have for them. So our presenters. This evening our presenters are led by Michael Butler. Michael is the manager of coaching for BC Hockey and also is the manager of school programming. Michael is joined by Aaron Hoffman. Aaron is our BC Hockey coach coordinator. And as well, we have several of the cross ice leads that uh, have volunteered around the province to uh, play an active role in this. And several of those will be uh, presenting as well this evening. So without further ado, I'll uh, pass everything over to Michael and we can begin the presentation. Perfect. Thank you, Bill. Uh, welcome everybody to this webinar. Thanks for contributing your time and your busy schedules for this en Enhanced Services project. Um, this is a new webinar format we're using, so I hope that things uh, work smoothly. Um, if they don't, I'm sure I'll hear about it. But uh, I'm lucky enough to be surrounded right now by a number of IP leads that will be presenting on various topics um, through this seminar. They sort of have been handpicked throughout the province to um, be the conduit of information from our office, from Hockey Canada, down to the minor hockey associations, and so far we've had a great success with them. I think we're finally rounding the corner in terms of buy-in from minor hockey association coaches and, and parents, uh, having seen the product in play for the past few months. Um, basically we're going to go over the mandate here. The mandate here that was brought forward uh, to our board of directors by the district presidents is that all minor hockey associations operate the IP program and utilize cross-site systems for participants below the ATOM level. So that's basically um, everything 8 and under. So I know a number of different areas in the province call IP different things. They call novice different things. but in general, um, any, anything below the atom level is required to, to operate in a cross-site surface. So um, if you guys have questions on sort of the timeline that this was implemented, the, the decision-making process, I can cover that um, at another time. It's also uh, located on a memo on our website, which might be helpful for you guys to view. Uh, but Jeff O'Keefe, one of our leads, will be going over some of the resources that we have on our website. Uh, our agenda today is basically going to go over the benefits, which are I'm sure you're aware of by now. but we're just going to reiterate that with Aaron Hoffman. Um, we'll talk about current resources with Jeff O'Keefe, who's our IP lead out in the Okanagan region, who's done a lot of great things with uh, video and sort of parent presentations and Coach One seminars. 
Uh, we'll touch on MHA guidelines and best practices. That will be with Lee Richardson. He's representing the South Island right now, and he's done a great job in mediating a lot of the early issues we had with some of minor hockey associations out here. Um, and he's, he's a very strong leader in the position. And then we'll talk about the future of the program and what we're going to do to develop players as they go into the Adam division, um, addressing some of the issues that have been raised forward by our districts and minor hockey associations, by parents, by coaches. Um, and without further ado, we're going to have Aaron talk here real quick on the benefits here. Now, I know Aaron's in uh, a school right now, and he's a teacher by trade, and he's going to be dealing with some Christmas concert stuff that's going on right now, so hopefully there's not too much background noise, but uh, Aaron, we'll, we'll turn it over to you. Perfect. Okay. Welcome, everyone. My name's Aaron Hoffman, and I've got the best job on earth right now. I get to work with a whole bunch of great coaches, and two of them are right beside me, and i got Michael Butler, who's been amazing as far as getting me all the tools necessary to do my job. Um, first of all, I just want to give you a, pic a quick background, and this is why I'm here. I had the best minor hockey experience of anyone. I grew up in Cranbrook. I played with the Niedermeyers, but along with the Niedermeyers, I had incredible coaching. We won three AAA provincial championships, which is now your Tier 1. And when I look back now at how my player development happened, a lot of the implementation of the initiation program back then was similar to how we were taught, not only in those, those times, but moving forward from Adam and beyond. I think with this initiation program, with the cross-ice mandate, we're allowing kids now to actually touch the puck. We're in a situation where a lot of people are moving, we're teaching them to play in small, confined areas. We're going to increase the passes. We're going to increase the smiles on their face. Recently, I heard um, Glenn Hall and his buddy were sitting down, and they're saying, we don't want to develop thoroughbreds. We want to develop cutting horses. And unfortunately, for some of those kids that played in the novice ranks where they were scoring no, nine goals, it could often be associated with the ability to skate up and down the ice extremely fast. If you got the puck in your stick, you're much, likely, uh, much more likely to go and score on a full ice game. Meanwhile, you got Sally Slewfoot and Johnny punching in the face when you're not looking if you're keeping them you know, on the bench and not keeping them active and engaged. What this cross-ice mandate does is not only deal with games and jamborees, but it also deals with your practices. It allows you to be efficient in the skills and inventories these kids need in order for them to be successful. I had great coaches, including the likes of Colin Patterson, who's now in the BC Hall of Fame. He paid attention. I like to refer to his new coined phrase, meta-coaching. Kind of like the meta-learning, meta-thinking. He thought about coaching before he delivered it to us. We were always prepared. If you look at NASCAR racing, you have to pull in for this, the pit stop. Everyone has a role. And that's the best thing about this new cross-site format. The other initiation model, back when it was implemented, there were some uh, rumors that you had to be really skilled to understand it. That is definitely not the case now. If you are strong at being able to direct kids on the ice, that is what your strength should be, and that's where you should be designated. If you're the skating expert, put you there. If you are the rubber chicken, I can make people laugh, that is going to be your station. Every individual should have a role to play on that team. And if you have that where everyone is moving and there's very little downtime, you're going to deal with a ton less behavioral problems, and you're going to keep these kids loving the game as I have for so many years. Like I said, there's going to be problems along the way, but these can be addressed. And I know this is the most important group that we have in our minor hockey association. It's at the foundation. And when you look at the foundation, we need to work on our skating, and we need to work on our skills. And this will take us into Adam, where we're developing a transitional plan where we can deal with the likes of offsides. But I'll tell you this, give me a kid that can't skate, I don't care if he knows offsides. The game of hockey is not fun for him, nor are the players that are waiting for five minutes until that individual gets back and tags up for the off ice to be eliminated in that case. If you look at the likes of great players playing now in the game, Austin Matthews, you know, arguably Patrick Galani is doing pretty good right now unless he's shooting on his own net. But that said, when we're dealing with Austin Matthews, he grew up in Phoenix, and oftentimes he was playing in small ice. Small ice has many benefits, including the ability to get your heads up in traffic and make passes. Other benefits of the cross-ice mandate 
include the ability to not provide rosters. So if you notice there's a 31 score in one of the cross-ice games, you can simply take, reshuffle the deck and say, you know what, we're going to put best on best. We're going to put medium on medium. We're going to put week on week. And perhaps you might even be creative and say, you know what, we're going to make our best player who's scoring still 25 goals, he's going to play with his opposite hand stick. And if you now can get that kid to be able to skate in traffic, east-west, north-south, being able to skate to the best of his ability and be ambidextrous, we've got our next Crosby. And we haven't... to um, go the next mile. Moving forward, I know there's going to be a lot of problems with coaches not liking to go away from the past and the way that we dealt with the game. But I know moving forward, we've got the great likes of Lee Richardson and Jeff O'Keefe that will continue to make this product an amazing product for all of you. I can't wait to hear the questions that are going to come up. I know it can be a great thing and I know when I'm on the ice with kids, regardless if they're small or up to junior age, I can put smiles on them. We need to look at deliberate practices that are going to have kids moving and dealing with the inventory skills that are necessary for them to love the game all the way into adulthood. We're not developing NHL players, nor are we caring about wins or losses at this age level. We're working on skill. And if we're all on the same page and we utilize and share the ice effectively amongst coaches, we're going to be doing our job. Part of this campaign that I love so much is when you actually get to sit down with the parents and coaches alike and tell them of the benefits and tell them that their role is crucial in making this work or not work. We just have to look to models including Finland where their goalie mentorship program has developed the likes of Mika Kiprasov, in case you're a Flames fan like I, who was pretty good back in the day, along with Pekka Rene and several other goaltenders. It's because a consistent model has been set. USA Hockey, Swedish Hockey, Finnish Hockey have taken our program that we had developed in the early 90s. And now it's our turn to bring our game back, and it starts at the foundation. I know there's going to be uh, other things coming along the way, but I know there's champions in the program, and our job is to identify those people, like the Lee Richardsons and the Jeff O'Keefe's, that can deliver a great product, and keep it moving forward. So when you do know that person that does a great job, his job can't be like Colin Patterson. We got to keep this job going for a long time. And that's the problem. When the Colin Pattersons go by the wayside, oftentimes it's too easy to take your top five stars, trying to make them better instead of dealing with everyone and making them all successful on the ice. I'm so glad that I was given this opportunity to take on this role with BC Hockey and be here to develop for you guys. I hope you share the passion for my game because I'm sure you have probably something better to do close to the Christmas holiday if you didn't love the game as I did. It's nice talking to you. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron shares the sentiments of a lot of us with regards to development of athletes at this age. The, the long-standing tradition of having gameplay dynamics systems is just, just not conducive for physical literacy at this age. Um, our next presenter is going to be Jeff O'Keefe, who's going to talk a little bit here, if I can get this PowerPoint going, on um, the current resources. So hopefully I can link to the website here and you can see what what I'm showing here. Jeff, you can, you can go ahead. Okay, so hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Um, so as there, uh, Michael's showing you, this is the uh, initiation cross-ice hockey website. So just to get to this site, you go to the BC Hockey homepage, uh, there's a link under um, uh, programs, and it's an, it says initiation cross site. So when you scroll down, this first little blog blog here sort of gives you just a quick overview. So yeah, that's Michael showing you there. So when you get to this site, it just shows you sort of a quick overview of what cross ice hockey is and the reason why BC Hockey is so excited about it. And, and the first thing you see there is sort of the, is an LTPD uh, link web page. So it just shows you how it sort of the cross-ice hockey fits into the long-term player development program. And then it just shows you that there's a link there in blue to the media release uh, explaining uh, that came out a few months ago and explaining what, what was coming. And you see there's that blue box at the top of the page that says practice plans. So maybe we'll go back to that in a minute. But if you scroll down where Aaron is, or where Michael is there, um, or we can look at practice plans right away. 
so oh, there we go. Okay, so uh, if you go down to this section, which is just a bit below, it's really comprehensive. It's pretty phenomenal the amount of information. I think. I mean, if I was a minor hockey director or a head coach, I could probably go here and get everything I need if I wanted to. Um, you know, dive in with the cross ice hockey program, which I assume, uh, from what I've seen, is a lot of, or actually almost all associations have so far. So, um, but if you're a parent or if you're just a coach or just someone with questions, a good place to start is the frequently asked questions link. So it's got starts right from uh, what is cross ice hockey, what is the BC hockey mandate. So it takes you right through, uh, gives you the nuts and bolts of what the program uh, is asking for, what it's mandating that associations do. Again, how it fits into the long-term player development, some of the benefits, some of the stuff that Aaron touched on beforehand, and, um, and it goes into obviously can they ask questions. So that's a good place to start if you just uh, you know need more information. Uh, another good place to start if you're a coach, um, you can go back, Michael, maybe, is up where we saw practice plans there a minute ago. And if you're sort of okay, I get the cross ice hockey concept. What am I supposed to do as a coach? What's my next role, a good place to start is that practice plans link. So that gives you a link to this page. And I mean, the link. this links from the initiation cross ice hockey, but really when you say cross ice hockey, because it is Adam and down, it does apply to initiation and novice. So it gives you, um, if you look on the left, you have, have uh, practices 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 for initiation, and then the same thing uh, for novice on the right. So what, when you click on those links, what that goes to is a ProSmart link. Um, which is sort of a sort of like a drill database for um, they have other sports as well I'm, I'm told but they have a lot of ton of different hockey drills so it'll give you a page like this and if you put the cursor over the ice sheet it'll highlight you'll sort of select a, one of those drills and it explains it below but if you click on that drill like that station which uh, looks like stationary passing I believe um, it'll actually if you click on it it'll take you to the pro smart page link and they actually have as you can see, once it loads, ah, oh, well, it doesn't get it this time, but if you have a decent browser, no offense, Michael, uh, you'll have, uh, you'll be able to see the actual animations in the ProSmart program. So it's pretty scooped and they've got uh, not only the animations for the for each drill, but they've also got, um, you know, pro tips and things to watch out for, things to encourage kids to do while they're doing the drill. So uh, like Aaron said, if, you have, if your role is to teach passing one night, if you're the coach that's going to be in charge of passing, you can make sure you have know what you're, what's going to be going on at your station, things you need to be encouraging kids to do. So this is this sort of goes beyond just a small area of games concept, but it gives coaches a greater – but it fits in with that sort of emphasis on skill development, and this is a great resource. This ProSmart page, uh, uh, drills page is great. If you go back to the other page, uh, the initiation page, Michael, I promise those videos work too. As an aside, I'm not sure. It might be because of the the WebEx, but I tried them earlier today, and they they all do hyperlink to. Yeah, they work for me too. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if you go down, uh, some more resources for drills are um, is linked to Drill Hub, Canada Hockey Drill Hub at the bottom, which still has a ton of drills. But um, what the really scoopum resource is, if you can get it, is uh, just a little bit lower, where in black, where it's the Hockey Canada Network app. And what that is, is it's basically, typically in the past when you go to um, a coaches conference, whether it be initiation or novice, advanced or midget, is you get sort of a binder with your, your package of drills and your yearly plan. The Hockey Canada Network is a network app is like every binder from every coaching clinic, plus videos, plus a million other bells and whistles. It's pretty amazing what Hockey Canada has done. So, um, you know, beyond that page where you saw practice plans for, um, initiation to novice, it has not just 1 to 8, it has like 1 to 32 or however many ice times you have in your year for initiation to novice. Adam, there, Aaron's showing it to you if you can see his video. Um, you can also, once you're, you have your account set up, you can invite other coaches and other parents and, uh, into your team that you can set up within the, net, within the app. And that allows you to not only um, share out your practice plans with parents to be to increase transparency in what you're doing and what your program is. But also you can give heads up to, you know, if Michael's running, if I'm running a practice with Michael and Aaron, I can say, okay, Michael, you're going to be running the passing station. Here's your drill. Make sure you're ready for it. So Michael's not just told what he's doing five minutes before I go on the ice. We can actually be a little bit prepared to deliver that skill and teach the kids what they need to know. 
So it helps with transparency, it helps with preparation, it helps with organization, and it's just a great resource. So, and I think um, what they're moving towards is every drill uh, that they have in that, they're going to have a video of not only um, an explanation of the drill, drawn on a board with um, pro tips and things like that for, for the actual drill, they're actually working to have a video of that skill being done at a high level, being done by a player closer to that age level, whether it be initiation or novice or whatever, and then also a game situation where that skill is being used. So if it's, you know, Mohawk turns or something, they'll show a clip of, um, you know, Brent Burns or someone doing it and saying, oh, here's where it happens in the game, this is why we're practicing it. So the hockey cat reef is pretty phenomenal if you get a chance to do it. If you get to go to a Coach One clinic, uh, Coach Two Clinic, I heard they're also doing it as well, is that they'll give, they'll give out promo codes to participants and that'll uh, reduce the cost to 20 bucks. And it's 20 bucks for the year, which is um, a fraction of what you'd pay for that same, uh, those same resources if you went to like coaching clinics per se. Um, so just back on the original website here, you have a bunch of other articles uh, just around cross-ice hockey and the benefits. Most people um, that have Looking at cross ice hockey at all, probably heard the stats uh, done by that USA Hockey Analytical study they did. Um, this goes beyond that and finding articles um, uh, by George Kingston and other people, Hockey uh, Hockey Ontario, Hockey Eastern Ontario, um, and other sort of success success stories around this format. And then if you go a little bit lower, you have some phenomenal video work uh, by uh, that we. We did some video work in Kelowna and sort of the success that they're having with the program. They've implemented a lot of really good best practices, and uh, so that's that first video. And then it just shows, uh, shows some other videos uh, that Hockey Canada made around the small area games concept and some commentary from um, the, the higher ups in, in Hockey Canada. And then again, it shows some of the USA Hockey Analytics video um, at the bottom if you haven't seen it, which really. Um, if you haven't seen it, that's where that's might maybe a good place to start if you're sort of new to the concept. So, um, like I said, the uh, BC Hockey they're pretty they really put a comprehensive list of resources, right? From if you're a parent just wanting to know more about it, or if you're a minor hockey administrator looking to how to set up your sort of infrastructure to support cross ice hockey, uh, it's all there on the on the website. So, there you go. Perfect. That thank you very much for that. Uh, Jeff, we do have a lot of resources on here, and I encourage coaches to to check it out, read the articles, um, send parents here that are are convinced that the game is not being developed properly with cross ice. Uh, it's it's actually it's it's really good. We work hard to update this all the time to make sure it's current, and uh, the FAQ is updated and and relevant to what people are facing in the field. Um, on that topic, we're going to go to Lee Richardson here, who's going to touch on some of the more logistical items that he's been working on. So a number of uh, district associations have done good work in, in developing actual gameplay protocol and dynamics, which was um, required for hockey at this level. And, and um, Lee, if you want to touch on that, I, I think I have some of the documents here I can pull up as well. Um, but I'll let you go ahead. Perfect. That's great. Thanks, Mike. And I, um, I'm really excited that uh, I got asked to do this because it was an interesting experience having our um, district put that document out um, that Mike will pull up here in a minute. If you can pull up the BHA one, that'll be great. Um, right at the beginning of the season and as uh, things started to roll out, we used that document as, as a resource for our uh, different MHAs as they went through trying to get their head around how the cross-ice teams would look. Now, for um, Vancouver Island Amateur Hockey Association, they put out theirs um, in September, um, and they just kind of outlined the start dates for games, um, what the game should look like, how to use the ice surface, um, which gave me a point of reference for all of the MHAs that I've been working with as they've implemented the program. Uh, moving across. The great thing about having this document was, as Eric mentioned, having a consistent program. Um, the consistency of the program at each MHA um, is definitely getting there because we have this resource to go to and kind of guide us along. Um, there's still been lots of bumps in the road. I've heard about referees and um, different things over the last little while. I think we just have to keep reminding ourselves that this is the first shot at it. And these documents are definitely uh, what I would call live documents that will continue to evolve as we get our head around how 
this all works. Um, but they, they go through things like team size, um, the on ice team size, how you split the groups up on the ice, whether you go three on three, four on four, or five on five. Um, it talks a little bit about the games, um, game sheets. Uh, we just want to make sure we have a record of who's there on the ice in case something was ever to happen. So most places are using game sheets. However, we're not using game numbers. Um, in in our associations, we're not we don't have a a main person to speak to like a commissioner that can hand out game numbers. So we've just been saying no game numbers. The referees are being allocated by the MHAs for the games. Um, that's definitely something that you'll want to think through and make sure you have planned ahead of time. Some other little things that you might want to include if you were creating a document or best practice list like this is talk about who's responsible for setting up the ice when it's a, uh, when it's a home game. Uh, make sure that those things are delegated. Those are some issues that we've run into having visiting teams, helping with stuff like that. Um, sometimes isn't isn't the easiest thing, so there, there is things that can be added to the document. Um, this is the Pacific Coast one that he's got up now, and as you can see, the VHA one, or the Vancouver Island one, was mirrored off of this, and they designed it off of this one. Um, once we found out that we were going to this format, um, we referred to this one that was put out, I, I think Mike put this one out, um, near the beginning and we were able to work off of it to create uh, a very good um, well balanced resource for people to be able to figure out what to do with certain things as as time goes along we we're adding things to it and changing things a little bit i know there was some points of contention around how many games how many games for jammeries and i know uh, BC Hockey has stepped up and gave some guidance around those things and put a memo out about tournaments, um, which was also really helpful and uh, was a very good addition to what we had in that resource. Um, we, uh, we, we want to make sure that when we do put these types of things together, that it's in the spirit of what we're trying to do. And some people take the guidance on those quite literally, so it makes it a little bit difficult. Um, when there's a lot of gray area, like Aaron was saying in his presentation, there's no roster, so we can shift kids around, do things differently, make the teams balance so that the games don't get out of hand, so the kids, certain kids don't control the games, which is a huge asset. And the spirit of this program is to make it so that the kids are having fun rather than having a competitive hockey game. And the sooner that we can get to a place where people don't uh, see this IP hockey as that competitive game that they're used to, the better off we will be, and I think more skills driven. Um, what I've seen uh, in the last couple of weeks going to the rink has been great. Uh, lots of skill development in between the blue lines while kids are playing at those cross ice games at each end. Um, that part's been fantastic, and I think just adding that amount of time for kids um, having no bench time during the game is going to pay off over the year. and as we get closer and closer to a time where people haven't played full ice games already, like right now, our IP4s um, have already played full ice games before on Vancouver Island. So as we get them moved up to Adam and transi transition them into the Adam program, um, we're going to have less issues come up around the, oh, we were doing it this way before. Um, and kids will be really used to this program where they're moving all the time, which is going to pay off, as I said, in a lot more. Think about it if a kid's moving the entire time and they would normally be sitting on the bench, which on most of these teams would be a third of the time. They're going to get at least two-thirds more time on the ice, which is going to be uh, great for their development. Um, I think overall we want to make sure that we're focusing these on these best practices and keeping them evolving. As I said, I see them as a live document, and I, I hope people see them that way. We're, we're always going to be learning and adding new things to them over the next couple of years as we roll out and move into the Atom transition plan as well. Perfect. Thank, thanks, Lee. That was a good explanation of, of what's out there. And we're going to work as a branch and with Aaron and with our IP leads to develop best practices for minor hockey associations uh, tiers one through four, four districts. Uh, districts that have stepped up should be commended with their adaptability for the mandate and I think that 
their support has gone a long way to make this program a success with the quick imp implementation that we've had. Um, I'll go quickly here into our next and final um, sort of section here, and Aaron, Aaron and I will go on this. Basically, Aaron touched on it a bit earlier. Um, we've taken a lot of questions from minor hockey, from parents, from coaches on uh, non-hockey development, non-physical literacy uh, development with regards to these players entering full ice. So people are asking us how a child will adapt to offsides, adapt to icing, adapt to uh, changing on the fly and, and stuff like that. So we've taken those questions and, and questions on 5 on 5 team play and stuff like that. We've taken that and we're going to be developing a, an Adam transitional plan. Uh, we've assembled a group of uh, physical literacy experts, hockey experts throughout the province to be part of this team. Um, and we're going to work on a, a program, and I think it's going to, to look like a, a two-week hockey school, really, before uh, the Adam season kicks off. That's the way that, that we've sort of thrown out the idea. It's not going to change the, the dynamic of Adam hockey. Adam hockey is still going to be full ice. But we want to best prepare our players um, to adapt to full ice strategies and the rule differences that are in there. And that will contend and alleviate a lot of the stress that I think uh, parents, players, coaches are potentially going over with regards to this sort of transitional phase. Aaron, do you want to touch on that a, a little bit? Um, yeah, basically how, you know, real, as we're going into this and we're just in the preliminary stages, but I, I think other than just the ice, as Michael alluded to, hockey schools involve the gymnasium and maybe some type of chalk talk, maybe some electronic type format. We're trying to develop it in a way in which kids will see offsides and the ability to adapt to full ice in several different ways. So that way when they hit after that two week time period, they're gonna be able to jump right in. And especially if our coaches are doing the jobs that are necessary in the IP program moving up in the cross ice development model, these kids are gonna be more skilled and they're gonna be more receptive to be able to see it in a two week time span before getting on the ice. I think we it's really important. I think the competitive piece should be you know reduced and the collaboration should be more at the focus. If we collaborate and we work together as coaches and we help one another out, try to develop all the kids in the associations to the point of better skilled athletes, we're gonna have to we're gonna have a better end product. And uh, I think with this Adam transitional plan, I'm really excited about this because this is gonna, I think, honestly be a seamless approach for um, for kids moving forward after this year on developing from cross ice to the full ice um, model. Dave King, I think, said it best. You on one of the Coach Two um, clinics that I that I coach uh, or I fac facilitate at. He said, "You know what? Practice are the best times. It should be the best time for players and the best time for coaches, adults, and the likes, because everyone's moving. Everyone should be engaged. A good practice is where everyone's moving. And some people would say that needs to go all the way up to midget and junior, junior and beyond if they choose." Everyone should be moving in the game, and that's why we're trying to give them the head start on it at the cross ice model. So yes, I'm really excited. We've got a great panel for this Adam transitional um, program that we're going to be developing, and I believe Michael, it's March 31st. March is 15th is, is March 15th. We're going to have it out. Yeah, is the deadline for us to have that to all the MHAs and up and going. Yeah, so we're going to have a, a comprehensive plan for how to implement this in minor hockey and how your coaches are going to get exposed to these training practices and, and what the actual um, the, the actual product is going to look like. So um, we'll have it by March 15th at the latest. That's our deadline. We're going to have a, a meeting here pretty quick in January, uh, and then we'll, we'll move forward from there. But, but I'm happy with uh, where we're going with this project, and, uh, you know, it, it's... It's the success of it is based on everyone's attitude, and I think that if everyone sort of understands what we're doing, then it's it's going to uh, reflect positively in player development, and physical literacy. Perfect, and and like I say, you know what, I um I really like to to hear from people as well. If you guys have some ideas on different things that might work, maybe you come from a different sport background, different different things. Always, I like to implement into our um, our discussion plan when it comes to these types of things. So especially in, in the area in the gym and stuff, if we can think of some creative ways in which we can make these things happen, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, and just with regards to one more housekeeping note, there are a few questions that have been sent to me. 
Um, and what we're going to do is we're not going to answer them here and now, but we will compile them all in a document and email them to everybody that was on this call. Um, we do have answers for them, but I'd, I'd rather keep this to under 45 minutes before um, uh, before going too far into these questions. But these are questions that I've seen are quite good. Um, and uh, we'll answer them moving forward here, and we'll have those answers by, by next week. So that's the time I'll give myself, and, and we'll review those. And I appreciate all the feedback. And if you have any more, we can all be reached. There's access to all of our IP leads in your district. That can be found on our cross sites website as well. So uh, if you go to our website, go to the Initiation cross sites page, uh, there's a link to all of the email addresses for our leads. Um, so guys, you might get an influx of questions now, but uh, it's all good stuff. So. Uh, with, without anything further, that, that's my closing contributions and, and we're excited with this project moving forward and thank everyone on this panel and, and Bill from the office as well as Stacy for helping us out here and uh, uh, all the best to you guys in your, in your holiday season, so thank you. Thank you Thanks, very much. Michael. I'll uh, maybe just close it off. I've got a couple things. Uh, first of all, a thank you to you for attending. I know the, the demands of the hockey season and uh, complicated by uh, holidays coming up and all that sort of thing for you guys to take an hour out of your uh, out of your life to uh, to be updated on something that you're you're very passionate about. Uh, uh, I congratulate you for that. Uh, to our presenters, Aaron, Jeff, Lee, uh, Michael, uh, thank you very much. Uh, same goes to you. I know you got an awful lot on your plate. Uh, those district leads that you have established, Michael, uh, are absolutely key. And if, if anyone in the field has questions, uh, make sure you get a hold of these guys. These guys are good, and uh, they can help you out uh, based on their own personal experience and the ability to work together as a group and the experience that, it, that everyone else is having as well. Um, the webinar this evening, I, I, I would al also love to hear from some of you anyways on the quality of production and the clarity of uh, both video and audio to make sure that we can offer this uh, as professionally as possible and be of benefit to those that sign in. So if there are questions and or um, comments on the actual webinar itself, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Um, finally, the uh, program tonight will be taped and uh, we may have to do a little bit of editing on it uh, just to make sure that it uh, doesn't waste anyone's time, but eventually it will be posted on the BC Hockey website. So people that uh, maybe in your association that missed tonight and would love to know what happened, uh, the uh, recording will be available in probably about a week's time, so I'll look forward to that. Um, the last thing is, if people have comments on whether they would like to do this sort of webinar again, so part two, part three of this type of presentation, I think it would be really important for us to hear from you on that end of things. And maybe we can drill down a little deeper and answer some of those questions that you have or start working on other projects and show you what um, the transitional phase will look like, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So if there is interest and if this went well, please let us know and uh, hopefully we can we can go from there, and certainly a uh, episode two or episode three is uh, within the realm of our possibility. So in saying all of that, thank you very, very much. Uh, have a great holiday season, and uh, good luck with the kids. Um, you're lucky people that get to work with them. We get to work a little bit behind the scenes, but when you're on the ice with them, uh, have a blast because uh, uh, I know they are too. And I thank you very much for your uh, uh, efforts with them. So on behalf of everyone, thank you. Have a great Christmas and hopefully we'll be able to do uh, part two or an extension of this uh, sometime in the near future. Thank you everyone.